a natural or inner join. What I want to do is I want to take natural inner joins and outer joins and lump them together to start with. How I like to explain natural joins and outer joins stems from the basis of relational database theory, how relational databases are built in terms of one-to-many relationships and the results that you pull from those one-to-many relationships using select statements. I like to think of it in sets. So going back to the natural join, the natural or inner join is actually the intersection between two sets. If you remember in grade school mathematics where you drew these circle diagrams and the part where the two circles meet, there are elements within that area intersecting between the two sets which are common to both sets. That's what a natural or inner join is. A natural or inner join is the intersection between two sets where, for instance, if we looked at the ACT table and the supporting ACT table, the intersection or natural inner join between those two sets is where the ACT ID is equal to the ACT ID in both tables. In other words, you'd select from ACT and from supporting ACT, and you'd say ACT ACT ID is equal to supporting ACT ACT ID. It's a natural join naturally between the two keys where the ACT table is using its primary key, ACT ID, and the supporting ACT table is using its foreign key, where the supporting ACT is using a foreign key which happens to be part of its primary key structure. So that's a natural or inner join. Just remember it's an intersection of sets. The outer join is something different. There are three types of outer join. A left outer join, a right outer join, and a full outer join. So what's a left outer join? A left outer join is the intersection between two sets plus all the elements in the one on the left. And obviously the right outer join is the same thing as the intersection except opposite. It's the table on the right that's included. A full outer join is everything. Everything in the intersection, everything in the first set that's not in the intersection, and everything in the second set that's not in the intersection. You could look at it like this. You select from two tables, you do a natural join, and then the outer join is the part which is in set A and not in set B. The converse is true for the right outer join, where the outer join part is the part which is in set B and not in set A. And once again, the full outer join is everything. Note that a full outer join is not actually a Cartesian product. It's not a multiplication between the two sets because it does match the intersecting values. All it does with the other values is it simply selects from set A without including the set B values. And the same is true of set B, which it selects from set B without including the set A values. So the result you would actually get is a join with the number of rows equal to three things. The first thing is the number of rows in the intersection, in other words, the number of rows in the natural or inner join, plus the number of rows that are in the left-hand side table without the intersection, plus the number of rows in the right-hand side table without the intersection. The result would not be rows of set A times set B. It would be quite a lot less than that assuming your data was structured appropriately to use outer joins. Just one point to note. If you're using a lot of outer joins in your SQL code, the chances are your data model is not quite sound, but not necessarily true. Outer joins are extremely inefficient because they read a lot of data that doesn't have matches. Now, in a, a purist's relational database, Every relationship between each table is one to many or one. It is not zero or one to zero, one or many. Let's take the relationship between the act and show tables. What it's saying is that I can have an act and I must have one act, but I don't have to have a show. In other words, an act does not have to have a show. So, for instance, a pop music act does not have to be scheduled for any shows at this point in time. Same applies to the venue. What this means is that 
I could theoretically do an outer join on my act table and my show table, and I would find all the acts with shows and all the acts without shows. Now my question is this, as far as outer joins are concerned, is why would you want to do that? Why would you want the act information joined with the show information, showing both the acts that have shows and the acts that don't? Why not just do two separate queries where you have all the acts that have shows, and then the second query would just list the acts, excluding shows? It's very difficult in practical commercial situation to find instances where you need to use outer joins. If you're using a lot of outer joins in SQL code for your application, you might want to take a look at your data model, although changing the data model is expensive and very time consuming. So that's outer joins. 